I'm standing on top of an ancient grave right now. In fact, I'm standing on the biggest burial mound in Sweden. This place is called Anund's Hög, and that refers to both the area and this particular huge barrow. This grave mound is dated to 4 or 500 AD, which places it in the Iron Age. That was a time of great migration in Europe. People left their cushy homes in southern Europe to find new places to live up here in the cold north. The time of this mound is just before the Vendel Age, that's 550 AD to 800 AD. That's just before the Viking Age started. But people lived here even before that. Remnants that are 3,500 years old have been found here. And there are ancient carvings from the Bronze Age showing ships and boats, which probably means that this was a significant trading post back then. So this has been a historically significant place for a long time. In 400 AD this was a sacred burial site. And in medieval times this was a thing site, basically a site for medieval courts. This was also one of the stops on the Eriksgata. Eriksgata was a tradition that all newly crowned kings in medieval Sweden had to observe. They traveled to lawmen in all provinces of Sweden to get recognized as the true king. During that trip they passed on its hug using a road that had been here since the Iron Age. This runestone served as a marker for people passing on the Eriksgata. It was raised around 1000 AD, but this runestone is a little bit different compared to other stones from that time. Most stones from that time have Christian markings, but this one completely lacks all of that. Up until now I have given you a lot of information, but now it's time to go into the territory of pure speculation. Cause it's not really sure at all what these symbols represent. It could be that they're meant to be a man and a woman intertwined. Most likely Viking Age people knew what this meant, but uh, that knowledge is lost in time. And speaking of lost knowledge, no one actually knows is buried at Anund's Hög. Maybe an ancient powerful king, or maybe many kings, no one really knows. In 1788 a couple of rascals from nearby Vesteros tried to excavate Anund's Hög. Not for any scientific reasons, they were simply grave robbers, but uh, they actually couldn't be bothered to dig all the way down, so they most likely found nothing. In 1998 a proper excavation started and they found that there was a clay foundation at the bottom. On top of that they placed the king inside a big ship and burned it to the ground and then they piled the rocks on top of the ashes. They put dirt and grass on top of the rocks until the hill got the same shape it still has today. Something you often find next to ancient Nordic barrows are these rock shapes. They take the form of ships and it's not 100% sure what they were actually meant to be used for. It could be that this is the shape of the ship that will take the dead to the afterlife. But it's been speculated that they could have been used for celebrations instead. Basically parties connected with the burials. Anund's Hög has five of these stone ships and that's the most you'll find in one place in all of Sweden. Notes from the 1600s say that these stones were scattered all over the place. Likely good Christians back then tried to erase all traces of pagan history. These stone ships were restored in 1932 and I'm happy that I can see them today. This is another ancient site close to Anund's Hög, the labyrinth at Tible. Maybe it should be the barely visible labyrinth at Tible. The labyrinth was constructed with uh, two or three thousand stones in an intricate pattern. And the reason for this labyrinth is not fully known. I keep saying that a lot, don't I? Well, ancient history is veiled in mystery. It's speculated that this labyrinth was used in spring rites, though. It's believed that a girl stood in the middle of the labyrinth 
and a boy had to try to reach her without touching any of the stones. If he touched a stone, he failed and another boy got to try instead. But the story doesn't tell what happened when the boy reached the girl. That's up for anyone to guess. I can do it! I'm almost there! I think I failed. I hope you enjoyed this little look at Arnund's Hug, the biggest burial mound in Sweden. If you enjoy learning about new interesting places or listening to strange tales, like and subscribe. But most importantly, have a great day.